All right. Welcome back to the Board Drill Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Kyle Bradburn, and with me is my co-host, Matt Dixon. Tonight, we have a special guest, Colin Drafts, the head coach at Nice High School. He's here to talk to us about uh, quarterback runs and quarterback PROs as opposed to RPOs. So, Coach, welcome to the show. We're super happy to have you on. I appreciate that. I like the round of applause there. appreciate that. Um, love you guys' work. appreciate you guys having me on and excited to talk about some, uh, some East football and what we do. Yeah, we're shocked anyone listens to us, too. Um, but if you are out there and you are listening or you're watching, Please like and subscribe. It does a lot for us. So take time, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button. And uh, without further ado, we'll get into it with Coach. So Coach, go ahead and take us away. Awesome. All right, we're going to go ahead and get to a share right here. I'm going to get to my – so someone else is currently sharing. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to – I thought we fixed this yeah. problem. You guys sharing on your end? A few moments later. All right. Um <laughs> Like we said, my name's Colin Drafts, head football coach here at Nice High School. Um, hopefully, I'm going to be able to, you know, give you guys something that you can um, pick and choose from. You might like, maybe you not, not, you know, you don't like it. Maybe you do it already, maybe you don't. <laughs> but if you do and you want to contact me, got any questions at all? Here's my email right there, um, Colin Drafts at ST Johns, and there's my Twitter and X right there. Feel free to contact me at any time. Love talking football. Um, if you hear this popping on right now, I'm in my office at the school that comes on from time <laughs> to time. But um, anyway, can't fix that. Let's pop right into we're talking about neat, the Nice quarterback run game and pass run options. OK, and so um, as we get into this right, instead of jumping right into the film and the X's and O's, I do think I think it's important uh, to, to talk about things, questions to consider, you know, as you get in there with your coaching staff, what are we really trying to do? When you're talking about running your quarterback, when you're talking about running RPOs, just things to think about. And so first things first, you know, as I've gone through it through the years, I've been really lucky to have um, been blessed to have a lot of really talented quarterbacks at the high school level to coach. But they were definitely uh, a, a wide variety of different types of quarterbacks as well. So I don't think you can just go in and say, you know, before you even know what you have, that this is what we're going to do with our quarterback. Uh, the first thing I need to answer really is what type of quarterback, you know, what type of quarterback do we have? And just three kind of very basic questions I think you need to answer before you start to build, you know, build your system, um, you know, speed and quickness. OK, you know, what 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 speed does your QB have? I mean, obviously, there's going to be a wide range of athleticism at the quarterback position at the high school level. Do you have a four six guy? You know. Do you have a four nine guy? I've had both. And once you answer that question, you can kind of, uh, you know, begin to build that package for them. Number two, you know, size and durability. Okay. Do you have a big guy? Do you have a Tim Tebow? Right. Do you have a Kyler Murray? Okay. You know, that's going to be important to answer because if you have a big, you know, kind of bruising type of quarterback, then we can get you some inside run game, you know, with the QB. If you have a smaller guy, right, you're probably not going to, you know, want to run him a lot um, inside the tackle box. And number three, um, and probably the most important one, in my opinion, is going to be the, you know, the decision making and the processing ability of the quarterback. You know, how quickly can he really decipher, you know, what the defense is giving him? Um, you know, if he's a quick processor, you can put a lot on him uh, with the X's and O's, and if he's not you know, then maybe you need to tame that down and dumb that down a bit um, and build around, you know, build around what he's really good at, okay? Number two, you know, after we get through that and we're looking at what type of quarterback we have, <clears throat> excuse me, what type of schemes are we going to run, okay? So what do you guys already do? What do, we, what do we do on offense? And really we're talking about, you know, just run game right now. Are you a gap scheme team? Are you a zone, you know, are you a zone scheme team? Or are you both? OK, so what have you come up with, you know, in the quarterback run game and in your pass run option or run pass option games? It obviously needs to fit into what you already do um, offensively in your system. OK, if you already are an RPO team and, and what I mean, RPO, just traditional mesh RPO. OK, I do think it helps if you're going to run your quarterback, if you're going to try to implement some of the pass run option stuff and I'm going to get into. Um, that the transition of that will be easier into your system if you're already doing some RPO type of stuff, okay? 
Number three, um, most importantly, right, will these concepts get the, get the ball in the hands of our best playmakers? I think that's the most important thing. There's a wide variety of things you can do on offense there. You can run the quarterback. You cannot run the quarterback. Um, but I think you really need to answer, uh, you know, who's your best skill player on offense, okay? Do you have one guy who's just the dude? Is it, is it a receiver? Is it your quarterback? Is it your running back? Okay, it's going to be one of those guys probably, right? So once you get to that and you answer that question, then you build that entire system uh, from there. And obviously, as a high school coach, like we can't we can't go out and recruit our players. We have what we have. So that's going to change from year to year. So I think, um, you know, going back to the top here, when you're talking about running your quarterback and building that complete offensive system, you need to go through as an offensive staff and be able to, you know, look at answer, look at questions one, two and three. And once you have that information, then you can kind of build the system, you know, out from there. You know, coach, it's kind of funny how that works. You know, you're trying to figure out where your best player is, getting the ball in your hand. And on defense, we're always trying to figure out the best player that we can put in the spot to make the most impact, right? Go out and make the most tackles, things like that. So, <laughs> you know, and that guy either ends up usually at safety or nickel or, you know, one of those two spots, you know, one of the overhangs. So it's it's always fun to listen to the offensive guys kind of have the same thought process, just a slightly different way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you're a defensive guy, you want to put, you know, your best dude where you think the ball is going to go the most. Yeah. Okay. And it's it's nothing mind blowing, right? Everybody knows it. It's Jimmy and Joe's, not not X's and O's, and it's about about the players. And so, just to tie that back into what we're talking about again, what can your quarterback do? Um, what type of player is he physically and mentally? And then you kind of go go from there and, and build your deal. Coach, and okay. I'd like to highlight something you said here: uh, decision making and processing ability. Such right. an important piece when you're asking these kids to make decisions out on the field by themselves and uh, relying on those, on those kids to actually follow through the correct way under pressure. Um, just incredibly important to me for a quarterback uh, in your program. No, absolutely. I mean, I think it's probably the most important thing when you're looking at the quarterback position. Um, you know, if you have a guy that can handle a lot um, scheme wise, and, and X's and O's wise, and what I'm going to get into is really giving that guy the answers already built into the play. To me, that's what the RPO, the PRO is all about. Um, he needs to be a coach on the field. He needs to be able to decipher what the defense has given him. And, and there's always the correct place to go with the football. It might not work out exactly the way you want it to. But when you're going back and you're watching that film, you know, especially as a coach, you should be able to go back and say, this is what you should have done and why you should have done it. And if you have that guy that can do that 85 to 90 percent of the time mentally, then you're probably going to be, you know, successful on offense, in my opinion. Absolutely. OK. All right. So another thing, too, just to think about as a coaching staff uh, and to tie all that together, you know, your goal really should be to build a simple plan of attack. Right. By utilizing the best skill set of your quarterback. I think that a lot of the things um, that we show tonight you know, might seem complex, uh, or maybe it doesn't, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure, you know, wh what they might think, but I can guarantee you this, it really is not though. We'll make it look complex. We'll give the quarterback a lot of answers, but the way we kind of build it in and the way we teach it to the quarterbacks, um, you know, year after year, that it really is simple to him. Okay. And most importantly too. side note, um, it's always got to be simple for the offensive line. So regardless of what we're doing and all the film I'll show tonight, is really going to be tied around, you know, one to two core run schemes that don't change for the O line. It just changes for, you know, the skill guys around them and, and how we're how we're attacking that defense. Okay. Um, so really just to sum that up, you know, be able as an offensive staff, be able to answer what we're going to do, you know, why we're going to do it and how we're going to do it. Um, and then you you'll probably have success from there. Okay. As I go on here, I do want to give just a, a quick history. Um, of, of guys that I've been able to coach. Uh, and really, it's a history and evolution of me as a play caller, you know, over the last 11 or 12 years and all the different styles of quarterbacks that I've been lucky enough to coach and how they were diff different and how we built systems around them. Um, but when I first started off as a play caller in 2011 and 2012, I didn't know how good of a quarterback I had to start with. Uh, Francois ended up going on to play college football at Florida State. I also didn't know how much football I didn't really know, 
right? So back then, you know, very basic, didn't do a lot of quarterback run game. Nobody was really doing RPO back in 11 and 12 anyway. We were starting to kind of mess around with with package plays where you've got the, you know, you've got a run play with an attached key screen or something, but uh, very simple stuff. But back to DeAndre, um, you know, he was really a pocket passer that could run if he needed to. Uh, quick processor, though, great player. It's funny that he was labeled a dual threat quarterback. He was, and he'll tell you this, right? He's a he pocket, was a guy. Pocket, yeah. pocket guy that could run. And that's why Jimbo, you know, recruited him to Florida State to, to take over for, for Jameis Winston after they won the national championship. Yeah. Um, but then as I moved on, I was at West Orange as a coordinator for three years. Had a kid named Hayden Griffiths uh, that was super smart. Ended up going to BYU. Started to mess around with some zone read, triple option. Uh, some package play type stuff. Um, but again, not a ton of QB run that year, but he was definitely a capable athlete. And for me, what really changed the game for me as a, as a play caller was in 2014 and 2015, lucky enough to coach a kid named Woody Barrett, who was just an absolute freaking unit. I mean, he was 6'2", 225, 230 in high school, 4'5". I mean, he was the best athlete on the field at all times. And so what we did as an offensive staff and a lot of the stuff that we're going to look at, really the creation of a lot of it was when we had Woody. You know, why would I hand the ball to a running back when I could snap it <laughs> to a 230-pound kid that can run four or five and, and throw the ball 70 yards, you know? Uh, so learned a lot. It was a ton of fun coaching him, to be honest with you. You know, on any given Friday night, I could close my eyes and, and pick a sheet on, my, on a play call sheet, and, and he and I'm going to show a clip of him. So I can't take all the credit uh, for Woody. He was just a dude. Uh, and then when I was another unique situation that I had when I was the head coach at AC Floor in, in Columbia, South Carolina, my last year here, I don't know if you can see my mouse right here, but we actually used a two quarterback system, and, and both these guys really weren't quarterbacks at all. Um, one of them went on to play quarter, uh, cornerback at um, at UNC Pembroke, and the other one went on to play H-back at Catawba. But we kind of combined their skill sets, did a ton of, of cool stuff in the QB run game with package plays. We ran a ton of um, uh, shovel triple option off a of power read. It was, it was a, one of our core plays. It was pretty sweet and, and had a lot of fun just being able to come up with stuff that fit those two guys that weren't really quarterbacks and have them, you know, be, be successful uh, was a lot of fun. And uh, again, made me and, and, and that staff better football coaches. Um, but then as, as I got on to Nice in 2019, just, you know, three guys that I've had over the past four or five years, the first guy that I had Joe Nieves in 20, uh, uh, that should say 2019, excuse me, uh, 2019, big, powerful guy, 6'2", you know, 215 pounds, almost rushed for 1,000 yards. Um, you know, he was our top rusher, did a lot of inside run you know, run game with him because he could handle the load, right? I mean, if you look at the helmet right here, I don't know if you can tell, um, but that paint is chipped off <laughs> on his helmet right there because that's the way he played the game. So that's the style of quarterback runs that we were giving him. After him, when I had Marcus um, – Started a little bit his sophomore year, but really a two-year starter. He was kind of that combo guy. Like, he had the best mix of being a runner and a passer. He could really do it all. Super smart kid. We put a ton on him conceptually, uh, especially, you know, his junior and senior year that we knew he could handle it. His senior year ended up rushing for, you know, 580 yards and 13 touchdowns. Um, and then being, you know, this last year when Bryce Frick, Bryce Frick transferred in, um, you know, right before his senior year. Didn't know our offense at all. Didn't start until the second half of the fourth game of the year. It was a completely different type of quarterback than Marcus and Joe, right? Didn't have, um, you know, quite, quite the speed or running ability that those two guys had, but very capable, very capable. And a lot of the clips that I'll show uh, – or of him running the football, and he and he won us games with his legs. I mean, he he averaged in seven starts. You know what is he around? You know what is it? Forty, almost forty, fifty yards a game rushing the football, but in pivotal moments, right? And yeah. so, um, just the the progression that we've been able to go through as an offensive staff to adapt to the kid that we have 
at the quarterback position and kind of building out from around there has, has been a lot of fun. Um, you know, that's, that's why I love coaching football, man, being able to get on the board and, and scheme and, and um, you know, find ways to score points is, is, is why we do it. Okay. Dude, and Woody Barrett coach was an absolute unit. I hate to bring him back up again. <laughs> yeah, he, he was a dude. Whole, did, I you, just can't, did you like, coach against him or were you around in co- Orlando? I, I, yeah, I saw enough of them that I was, right. I, I think I was in Volusia County at the time, but, uh, yeah. you know, you just pull it up and watch highlights of them, <laughs> you know, after the games on, on Huddle and just incredible. Yeah. Sometimes when I board, when I'm bored, I'll still go back and watch, uh, watch his <laughs> highlight tape. You know, he went to Auburn, uh, when Miles on was still there, when they were still, oh, it was only a couple years after, you know, I guess, uh, Cam Newton, Nick Marshall. And they were still looking for that type of type of kid, and he was like the prototype, right? Yeah. And then after his redshirt year um, is when they brought in um, a new offensive coordinator and uh, Jared Stidham and decided they were going to throw the ball more. So it kind of, uh, you know, uh, put him on a different path. But phenomenal kid and, and a very dominant um, high school player for sure. A lot of fun to coach, like I talked about. Okay. Um so enough about all that. Again, just the whole point was you're going to have – you can't recruit your quarterback, right? And so whatever type of quarterback you have, you know, make the most of, of what he can do well, um, and we'll go from there. Now, just as an overall philosophy, I'm going to talk very quickly about how we go about, uh, you know, our thought process, how we build out the, the schematics that we get to, and then we'll dive into the film. But number one, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reiterate this. No matter what we do, if we're not trying to get the ball in the hands of our playmakers, then we're just drawing lines on the board for no reason. So always make that pr- the priority and then kind of go from there, okay? Number two, though, you know, when, when we're talking about, you know, we're talking about quarterback run game, we're talking about RPOs and PROs. For me, right, and for us as an offensive staff, we're going to work inside out. You know, as much as I love throwing the football, I'm a former quarterback myself. I love to run the ball. And when we've been at our best over the years is when we're right at 50% run and 50% pass, okay? So we're, we have to answer the question when we're b- building out our schemes, how can we run the ball, okay? And if you're going to do that, you, you've got to figure out how are you going to handle the extra hat in the box. And for us, what that looks like in, you know, in our quarterback run stuff and, and the RPO stuff is we're going to have a ton of answers. We're going to have a ton of answers. But to get to that, we've kind of got a progression of, one, how we install it, and two, you know, how we, ended up, how we end up calling it, you know, as the, as the season goes on as well. So we're going to start with, with very easy answers, right? Uh, and then we're going to work to, you know, what we at least would consider to be more complex answers. Um, so number one for us, uh, very simple, okay? We're going to take a core run play like counter, which is one of one of our, our best plays, and we're just going to trick him, right? And again, I'm talking about the free hitter in the box for the most part. We're just going to trick him with misdirection, okay? So if I've got QB, if I've got counter left called, right, we just have a simple tag for that play where we're going to, it'll line the running back on the other side of the quarterback. He's going to swipe fake it, and now the QB is running QB counter left. Yeah. Okay. Or I mean, it, it, it's it's like elementary stuff, right? But I'll I'll show you some clips that if you can get by with stuff like that, you don't need to do anything more, right? We're not going to get to complex stuff if we don't need to. And so there's a time and place to have have all these. But yeah, number Coach, one, we're just, we're going to go misdirection. Yep. We we had Coach Devin Bice from University of West Alabama, and he showed that exact yep. play. And the backside safety and the backside backer overran it. It was just a guard escorting a quarterback into the yeah. end zone. There was no Absolutely. one there for the guard to even block. Yeah. No, I've got a couple clips of it. It's great. Uh, <laughs> Coach Weiss was here at uh, – he was on campus at Nice when I first took this job. Yeah, he was. He was That's right. He was kind of on his way out. I think he spent a year at Creekside and then um, – Then he became a GA at uh, NC State, I believe. Yeah, he's a he's a uh, extremely smart coach though. But um, yeah, I mean, just hey, if you can just fake fake the running back one way and run the quarterback the other way, <laughs> you know, you're good to go. Okay, so that would be obviously an, an easy answer. Number two, okay, is we're going to get into our, our menu, so to speak, of how we're going to read first level defenders. And before I get into that, I, I used to always be like I was 100 percent a gap scheme guy. Like I was like we're we're not touching zone. 
we're going to run power and counter to the cows come home. Um, and a lot of this stuff, uh, the, the progression of it for me as a play caller and then us as an offensive staff too, it came about with saying, okay, if we're going to be a hundred percent gap scheme, right. Well, how are we going to run power and counter at a 10 personnel? Okay. Not talking about like one back power, right. Well, you don't have a, a sniffer in the game. So you're not, you're not kicking the end or rapping with a sniffer. You have to read somebody. Okay. So we go power read. Okay. Number one, everybody runs it. Okay. Then I, I, I fell in love with the old Urban Meyer, you know, Tebow, Tebow Percy Harbin, uh, power shovel stuff uh, to the tight end or the running back. And we'll actually get to triple option off of that as well. Okay. And then if we just want to get to some, to zone read, we can, but usually we'll get to GT triple option before we get to an inside zone uh, look. Okay. So that kind of is the next step for us in the progression. How are we going to read the first level defender? Okay. After we get to that, then we need to think about, okay, how can we get to that second and third level read for the quarterback? Uh, and we run, I know we're not here to talk about traditional uh, mesh RPOs, but we ran a ton of it last year. And the reason we did it is because, again, going back to what I talked about before, Bryce Frick, our quarterback that ended up starting the fourth game, he was a freaking stud at it. We're either running, you know, we're running counter. We did get to a lot of zone insert stuff last year, but he got very good at identifying, you know, overhangs and conflict defenders. Um, and was just on the money. So the majority of our offense came from that. Um, but again, he was a capable uh, runner of the football. After traditional mesh RPOs, we, we do a lot of called QB runs with attached perimeter screens. And to me, right, just kind of kind of di differentiate between at least what I call a package play, right, and then a true pass run option. And I'm going to have diagrams here on the next slide. But for me, a package play would be if I've got, you know, uh, Q counter left with a bubble screen to the right, okay, I'm actually, you know, two two plays packaged together. I'm probably going to make that decision for the quarterback pre-snap, right? We're going to call that play. He's going to set the defense, and he's going to look to me, and I'm going to signal to him, hey, hey, we're throwing bubble here, right? Hey, it's you, 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 you're running QB counter, or hey, we're throwing the backside gift route, okay? So to me, um, it's an option, so to speak, but I'm going to make that call for them, and we're just packaging, packaging those plays together, okay? As opposed to what we ended up getting to um, the first time we ran this a lot was in 2021, a true pass run option where we're going to have a Q run play called with a down the field, usually a quick game type of route, not a bubble, you know, all hitch, double slants, whatever the case may be. And the quarterback has to read that on the fly. And his progression in that is pass number one, if it's not open, I'm going to run the ball number two. So for me, just to define that clearly, the way we, we talk about it here is that's a pass run option for us. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just real quick. Uh, and the last thing we'll do is we kind of like to stack these up a little bit, get a little bit, a little bit exotic if we can. Utilizing multiple unbalanced and empty formations, um, 10 personnel unbalanced, 11 personnel unbalanced, 12 personnel unbalanced, and then we ran a, a ton of quads the past two years, which is really good, really good for us. The old oop de oop. Yeah. Absolutely. Love that. Right, Matt, you got to get Tweeter one on one on the backside. <laughs> All right. All right. Quickly, just diagrams and we'll dive into the film. This is exactly what I just talked about. Okay. So if we start in the upper left hand corner, Call QB run, okay? We're going Q counter right, right, with the misdirection fake to the tailback. Not reading anybody, just trying to influence linebackers, okay? Maybe pull the free hitter, the weak safety out, you know, out of the box a little bit, all right? And we're running QB counter. Okay? So that's pure QB counter the whole way. There's no give to the bash or anything like that if you read there anything. He's no, just running. No, okay. no give to the bash. Like I said, this is the elementary version, right? So we're not going to read anybody. We are calling counter right for the offensive line we tag it right for the qb and the tailback so they know that it's gotcha. now this direction and there is zero read and i think um there's a lot of merit to having something as simple as that because you can't give the quarterback too many options good example <laughs> you know if it's third and three right and i you know i've got 
key screen on the left, right, with a with a uh, a glance post on the right, and Q counter, and he the weak safety rolls down, and it's third and two or whatever, and he throws a glance post, and it dunks <laughs> off the kid's helmet. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm gonna be probably pretty pissed, right? So let's just in that situation or whatever situation you think it fits, have an easy version. Okay, quarterback counter, we're gonna fake it left, and you're gonna run right. Okay. Uh, the other ones are, are examples of the first level reads that we get into. Power read, everybody runs it, right? It, it's yeah. been, it was really good for us uh, when we had Marcus. We didn't run power read not one time last year, all right? It's, it's not what Bryce did, but Marcus was really good at it, okay? Shovel triple option, all right? Started running this back in, in 2018 at AC4 when I had the, the two quarterbacks, right? And so what was unique about that situation is you know, both these guys were QBs. The smaller kid, right, um, was the starting point guard on the basketball team. Very good decision maker, right? But he weighed about 155 pounds. <laughs> and the other quarterback who could easily play tailback was 210 pounds, okay? So if we wanted to have, if we were running um, QB, uh, excuse me, power shovel, well, then the smaller quarterback is going to play Q because if he keeps it, he's going to be on the perimeter. Yeah, but if he gets the shovel pitch, he's going to pitch it to the 210 pound kid. Well, same deal. If we were running power read with those two guys, we would just we'll give him a bump call. The big kid goes to quarterback because if he keeps it on power read, he's the inside runner, right? And if he gives it, and I've got my shifty, you know, scat back QB on the perimeter. Okay, so it just goes back to you know knowing your personnel and, and building around from there. Okay. And then again, uh, I love triple option, right? I, I say one of these days we're just going to go under center flex foam. But um, I, I love trying to <laughs> – right, I'll never do it, right? But love watching it. I love the principles of it. So I'm always trying to find a way. You know, we're always trying to find a way. How can we incorporate some triple option into things that we already do? Okay, so so to be able to do that out of 10 personnel uh, and stay in your gap scheme principles, just run GT counter, right? Um, and then you can get the triple from there. And we're going to go into more detail of how we read it out from the quarterback standpoint. Okay. Um, the next one. Okay. Again, going back uh, and talking about the differences and how we define these different categories, right? A package play with a screen right here. Okay. So this would be, um, excuse me, called QB counter in the box. Okay. With a pre snap gift. Uh, and some type of bubble or smoke or something to the three-man side. So, again, normally um, if we're running this, you know, we'll call that play and uh, and we'll get uh, – the quarterback will look to me and I'll make that decision for him. Hey, I want you throwing the bubble here. Hey, we like the gift. Or, hey, you should be running the ball. And I can get that – you know, obviously I can see that from the sideline. I've got a guy in the box. And if we have a quarterback maybe who's not – as quick of a process and we want to make that call for them, we've now have built in an answer for that kid and, and we can just tell them what to do with the football. Yeah. So as a coach, you have more, as a play caller, you have more control in this scenario right here. Okay. Traditional mesh RPO. Love it, right? It's not a Q run, but, you know, we're going to get to our core run, which is counter, right? And we're going to throw some type of route off of that, off of the, uh, the free hitter or the conflict defender. Okay. Now, a true run-pass option, okay, and our number one way to get to it would be out of a three-by-one set, okay, we're going to call Q counter, right, normally to the weak side, excuse me, but we can do it both ways. And what I love about being able to run Q counter out of 10 personnel is now I still have my guard kicking the end, but now I've got my tailback leading on a wheel backer or that safety um, and a tailback, I think, should be able to block a linebacker, right? We would never do that off a of Q power because I don't want the tailback kicking out the five technique. You know what I mean? So it's, it's just counter for us. And then we'll, we will attach a quick game concept to that, okay? So quarterback's going to have a lot, lot of options here. I'm going to get into the thought process for the quarterback, but it's pass number one, run number two for him. So that's our pass run option. Um, here's an example of how we got to it out of our quads. Okay, pass run option. Uh, we do run outside zones. We've got a, a uh, quarterback outside zone to the weak side of the quads. 
okay, or if he's got any hitch uncovered to the field, he can raise up and throw the hitch very quickly. Okay, and then I lo we love getting into uh, some unbalanced stuff with QB outside zone with some attached screens to the front side. Love it. Awesome okay. stuff here, Coach. All right. All right, as we go through here, <clears throat> you might ask why all the options, yeah. right? And so I, you guys have probably seen this meme before, right? It's, it's, oh, yeah. It's my, uh, we watch the favorite. show quite often, Always Sunny. Right. Always sunny. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, exactly, right? And again, like I can tell you, man, you know, Sunday staff meetings, it can absolutely turn into that. You know, we're thinking of all these, you know, crazy ways we could do this and we could do that. And that inevitably, you throw it all on the board, right? And then you got to delete half the crap you put up there. Oh, and yeah. that's probably the best way to do it. You don't want to overwhelm the quarterback. But if you can find what works for him, what you guys like, and know, you know, what you can be successful at, uh, you know, why all the options, number one, if you can empower that kid on the field, right, that's touching the ball every play, you're essentially making him the point guard of your offense, okay? You can call two to three schemes, you know, over and over, over and over again. And in theory, right, the next one on there, in theory, you should always have a built-in answer, okay? Yep. And so if you can get to that, you're going to make the de you have to, you're going to make the defense defend the full field, okay? Defend all five skill players and still try to be plus one on the run game uh, when you start running your quarterback. It's it's a very difficult thing to do. Um, and when yes, they if they fail at that, right, you know the ultimate answer is okay. Well, we're gonna you know we're gonna play man, right? You're gonna force the defense eventually into man to man situations that they're struggling to stop your your quarterback run in any type of RPO game that you have. And when you're when you do that, you're gonna get matchups. You're gonna get your best matchups. And that's, you know, one of the things that we're most proud of here. And it, it leads me to the next slide. Um, actually, we're talking about the passing game real quick. Um, you know, all the stuff that we talked about, when you combine it with the pass game, a very high percentage quick game, you know, menu, multiple screen game with the ones listed there. I've already talked about how much we really throw traditional RPO concepts. We're going to get to four verts, four verticals is day one install. For us, we're gonna. It was our most called pass play last year. You got your play action stuff and your, and your play action shots. When you combine all that with what we do in the in the quarterback run game and the RPO stuff, you know we've had a couple guys the last couple of years that have put up some huge numbers at the receiver position. You know, in in 2021, uh, Dom Henry led the entire state with almost 1,600 yards and 13 touchdowns, um, and then this past year. Maddox Spencer led the state with almost 1,400 yards and 16 touchdowns. Um, and we are not an air raid team. Like I said before, last year, I think we were, I think it was 53% pass and 47% run. Um, but just being able to force teams to inevitably have to play these guys one-on-one -on -one at some point, and then yep. we're going to force, we're going to force feed them the ball, whether that's through the quarterback, making the post snap decision on the RPO stuff or hey we've got you in man and you're gonna have to try to cover these guys. So I think that's that's the beauty of it. The ball will eventually find the open guy. All right. That's all I got for you guys right there. And then I'd love to <laughs> pop into pop into the film. Yeah. So if you're listening on a podcast right now, we're going to put up some film. We'll do our best job to describe it for you. But if you want to see the whole thing, then just hop on YouTube and you can see the whole clip. Okay. Um, currently not sharing the screen now, right? <laughs> All right. Let's stop this again. Three days later. All right. We're back up and running. Coach has his playlist up. So we're going to continue with our uh, Q run and PROs. Okay. Awesome. So, Going back to the, the order of operation, so to speak, for us in the progression, the first thing that we, that we talked about was find a core run that you do and then just tag it so it's misdirection, right? So, again, we're looking at counter right, right? We're going to fake the back to the left, uh, and the quarterback's going to keep the ball. Very simple. No read, right? We do it a 1,000 times over our freshman team runs counter, our JV team runs counter. And then when we get to varsity, we can we can spice it up a little bit. Okay, so let's see here. All right, hit play. Cool. All right, so first clip here is we're in. Um, we got Stokes at QB here. We're in a two by one set. 
It's the exact play that we just talked about. Okay. We're getting QB counter to the right into a seven man box. Okay. Yeah. On third and three. Okay. So again, right. It might be a situation right here where I don't want to give this kid the option to throw the ball. I feel good about the play call here and I don't want to give him an option. So not to be repetitive, but we wanted to run this play to be <laughs> counter to the right. Okay. Look here, right? Jeez. I think we get an 18-yard gain on that one. Okay, I'm going to go slow-mo here, and then we're going to be able to look at it from the end zone copy. Okay. Good fake by the quarterback here. No read. Get a good kick by the guard. Insert by the sniffer, right? We're splitting them up the middle. Okay, and we get a first down. So this is, I mean, it looks like they're trying to be in a bear, but the tackle and in are lined up outside your tackle, and your tackle basically kicks out both of them. Right. Well, so here you go, right? So this is the, the, the great – great angle right here you can kind of see all right so we actually checked into this play right so that was a check with me okay we check into it okay oh they're right, aligned so can, everywhere <laughs> right yeah so you can see here here's their their seven man box right and then here's the six guys that we're going to declare that we're blocking yeah okay so if there's a free hitter right it's, it's this kid out here right but we feel pretty good about the fact one he's he's pretty he's pretty far out there right he's probably not, not going to make the tackle on counter right and then the sweep fake to the back right should be enough to hold them yep okay? absolutely yep with you know what we would do on counter and we would change this right i'm going to show you a different kind of variation later but anything that the tackle considered head up right especially into an odd front like that we're just going to lock that up we locked it okay we would double the nose back to the wheel we're going to hinge on that four right there and then we're going to pull to kick here and then we'll wrap for the will there. Okay. So I'll pause it right here. You can see this guy. He, he <laughs> might as well not even be in the box, right? Yeah. Uh, we get a good lock on the four technique. Okay. Good kick. Good wrap. Boom. Okay. And there's your alley right up the hash, just how you like it. Is that coming in clear for you guys? Oh, yeah. No, yes, it looks great. I'm, I'm like angry watching it as a defensive coach. So you did <laughs> right. something right there. I'm sure. It is, and look, it, I'm going to keep saying this, though, but if you're going to run QB counter, you better have a guy, right, that knows how to hit counter. Because I yeah. can tell you right now, every year we install this on the freshman team, and you guys probably know the answer. But the first time we run this play, this quarterback <laughs> is going to see that, and run he's going to try to run sweep. Yep. Outside. Right? And he's going to get edge. tackled he's for gonna a two-yard loss. Okay. Yep. yep. So Marcus was, even though Marcus – you know, only weighed 190 pounds, right? He would run between the tackles. Yeah. And that was, you know, that was his skill set. Okay. So good looking play for us right there. Okay. Go to the next one here. Uh, check it. We checked into it again. Playing Fletcher right here. We're just calling this the other way now. Second and 10, right? Now, they look, they're too high. So we're going to get a clean six man box regardless, right? Unless they, they, you know, rotate somehow. So it should be a good play. But, you know, just adding in the misdirection element, right? Marcus Stokes was, you know, a great athlete for us. We want him running the ball here, and we've got a good play. Fake right, QB counter left. Okay. All right, we're getting eight or nine yards. Look at it from the end zone copy here. Okay. After so we check a, into it. If you're listening, they're lined up, uh, uh, what, what would you call this, empty, empty double sniffer here kind of look or? Well, Obviously, no, you're, I mean, you're two no, by one back. with two fullbacks, so you guys your 20, 20 personnel here. Well, I mean, not not really, though, right? This is just a base formation for us. Like, this guy's the tailback, right? Oh, I couldn't see from the other angle. I thought he was up on line of scrimmage. I'm... No. So here's the deal, right? If it Our alignment is based off the play call, okay? So yeah. if we were just running, you know, power left or counter left here, that's probably going to be that running back's alignment, and I'll show it to you here. When we check into it, right, we check into Q counter left, that runner back will scoot up, right? And oh, he's okay, gonna, yeah. He's going to get into what looks like a power read type of alignment. Okay? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And then obviously we have a lot of play action off of that that set as well. Uh, what was really good about this play, though, is you know even though it's a six-man box, it wasn't the easiest play to block it because of the pressure that they're bringing right here. But it was picked up very nicely. Um, you know, guard and tackle, wash that whole thing down, even with the mic and the, and the wheel plugging like that. Okay. And we almost we get like a double log right here. The guard yeah. and the fullback 
um, are able to to log, you know, the, the defensive end and, and the will. And you know, number twelve should be rotating down, right? He should be the free hitter. They've got to have an extra hat in the run game. I don't know why he's back. Maybe he's worried about the fake. I'm not sure, but we feel good about this play into a six man box. Matt, is it me or here we are again with film and I just double threes? <laughs> yeah, so many yeah, doubles. We, a lot of I, I, we saw that a lot. I don't Last get it. Last one here. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the end zone copy here. This is 21 personnel from the six yard line into a nine man box. Okay, uh, and it's second and six. So again, I mean, we could check into fade or slant right here if we wanted to, which wouldn't be a bad option into a nine man box. But we still felt good about. It's one of our core run plays. We're going to get some misdirection, and I like the kid running the football, and I know we're going to be able to block it because we run it so much. Watch the fullback on this right here. Uh, plug on the, the mic blitzing in the A-gap here. And they are stacked to the strength. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, right? Wow. And if you, I'm going to pause it right after the misdirection fake. Bam, here. We got three guys that might as well not be in the fit right now, <laughs> right? And so yep. we didn't block this perfectly right. We end up kind of kicking out, you know, a guy who's already blocked and he's free, but he doesn't he doesn't really come close to to making the tackle anyway. So we get a nice little stiff arm right there by Stokes, and uh, it's a good play for us, right? That that misdirection exactly does it for you because. I mean, against a nine-man box, there's four guys you didn't even have to block, really, essentially. Right. I agree. The way came I agree. You know, that that's not our job for you know for them to uh, for them to figure it out, right? We we've got a core run play called, and we felt good about the the call, and we went with it, and we had success. Don't don't get too complex and add all these variables that we are going to get to unless you really feel like you need. Them. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So that was you know just three or four versions of our Q counter. Okay. The next one, um, power read, nothing like, – like, I get everybody runs power read, right? So we'll kind of fly through <laughs> these and get to some stuff that might be a little bit different. Um, but we, we would like – we love running power read uh, to the to the weak side of trips and getting a crack on that weak safety and leaving the corner on an island. Or, excuse me, bringing the Y in motion, right, on jet and running power read to him. Okay. But we've got um, – excuse me, let me back this up right here. Okay, good example of what Marcus Stokes was able to do in the run game. Six-man box and 10 personnel, we've got to read one of them, right? If we're going to be sound in our run game, we're going uh, power read to the weak side. Ends up the field, make one guy miss, and he goes for, for 83. <clears throat> and that was third and three as well. Okay, wow. look at it from the end zone copy. Okay, we checked into a lot of plays, right? So we're checking into power read weak side. Okay, they're pointing it out. They're in, what are they in here? I mean, basically. Uh, they're just uh, under front, basically. Yeah, an under front. You know, you got like a wide nine. So he's the yep. kid we want to pick on. We'll <clears> slow mow <throat> it. You know, we'll, we'll shuffle two of them, eyes on the end. He's obviously up the field. Here comes our, our puller square pulling. Oh. Insert, right? Now it's one-on-one -on -one with the safety. You know, he, he should make that tackle for, for a 10-yard gain maybe. Um, but he overruns it and then, and then we score. And like you said, I mean, part of that, that bash motion, as I call it, and, and that bash fake makes those safeties overrun it. Right. Cause they're absolutely, they yeah. don't have great eye discipline and they're not reading pullers and guards and all these things. It's, right. you know, you're saying you overrun it by a step and that's it. Right. And that, that action that we're showing right here is the same action that we yeah. showed you on the QB misdirection. Right. So this could be power read here, or it could be, QB counter here. Correct. You know, um, <clears throat> this was into a nubs, uh, nub trips. And this actually won us the game back in 2021. Uh, and the funny thing about this play is the tight end blocked it wrong. We were supposed to art <laughs> to the weak safety and then we were going to read the defensive end, but he blocks them. Right. So anytime, anytime the quarterback's taught like, Hey, if your read key is blocked, just keep it. Right. So he keeps yeah. it. We, we insert and, and Marcus scores uh, to to win us the game. I mean, but that's the importance of like, you know, coaching the little things like you said there, right? Hey, anytime the rekey gets blocked, pull it. Right. And yeah. that's an important thing because if, if you don't talk about that and practice that and work on that, 
maybe he gives it there. Maybe he does something else. Right. So that's the epitome of the little things in coaching them correctly. Absolutely. You've, you've got, if you're the, and as we start stacking all these layers on the, on the quarterback and these options that we're going to show, it's got to be spelled out in very fine detail. You can't oh, yeah. just install these plays that we're going to look at and say, ah, yeah, hey, hey, figure it out, go play ball. You know, like, <laughs> hey, there's going to be a progression in the thought process of things. I mean, these are very simple and power read. Hey, I'm reading one guy. You know, yeah. if he gets blocked, keep it. Kyle, do you want to comment on their alignment there? Uh, let's run it back, coach. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're in. Uh, they're in two twos. I mean, two-twos. We, used to, we used to run that, Matt. I hated it, but we used to run that. And they're bringing they're bringing edge pressure to the trip yep. side right there. This was third and three, and we just happened to <laughs> we called a, a great play into what they were running. Right? I mean, we could have called you know a run to the trip side and maybe got smacked in the mouth, uh, <laughs> but it worked out for us. Okay, uh, just one more version of power read here. We're gonna uh, we're gonna bring that slot in you know jet motion. Okay, we're gonna run the corner off arc the running back here, and then uh, give the ball to the jet motion off a of power read. Okay, nothing, not reinventing the wheel here. Everybody everybody does some version of that, I'm sure. Ends up being a good play. Okay, just a good read by the QB here, understanding, hey, it's not always going to be a keep for you. You're the point guard. Make us right. Okay, make us right. We're reading the play side defensive end. All right. And he's got to be able to do that on the fly with this guy running full speed jet motion. Ends squeezes, we give, right? That's what we want. Yeah, again, it's just another great variation of the power read, right? It's, right. it's still Q power, but now you're reading a different kind of bash guy, right? Now it's the Y from the field. So right. I love exactly. it, Coach. It's super creative. It's, you know, the thing that where you're like, all right, how do we combat this? How do we combat that? If we see Y motion, you know? Right. Yep. It's a lot. It's a lot on Sundays. <laughs> so, to, so to build off of that again, we're going to still run power, right? And we're not going to change anything for the offensive line, but this is, you know, we, and we haven't, we didn't run this at all last year. Um, we ran it a little bit uh, in 22 and 21, ran it a ton my first year here when I had Nieves. Um, so again, it's something we could get back to, but a little more on the, on the creative end. I mean, you see it a lot in college football and the NFL. The Chiefs do it a lot inside, you know, the 10 and the five yard line um, paired up with maybe like a sprint out to the trip side. But a couple of years ago when I had the two QBs, man, we were we were calling this play, you know, six, seven times a game. Like It was a poor run. Right. So the thought process for the quarterback was we're normally always going to have some type of a pre-snap gift on the backside. Hey, yes or no. Right. If you've got you know, leverage with the corner off, right? The weak safety is not rolled down and you want to catch that snap and flip it out there on a smoke, right? Which would convert to a fade. You could do that. Didn't get to that a ton off of this play, but that truly would be option number one for the quarterback. That's kind of my, what we call the butt side because the play side, he's going to open up to the left. So his butt side would be here. The coaching point in your power read is a quarterback's got to come out flat right? He's got to make that look like sprint out. You do not want to get depth, right? Because if you get depth, if it is a keep, now you're going to have to bow back and gain ground just to try to get back to the line of scrimmage. So as I come out flat, it's just an inverted read off the end. If it ends up the field, right, I'm going to pitch that with my right hand on a shovel pass to the T, and he's going to insert and follow the guard. If the end squeezes, okay, we're going to keep it and the way that we would get to triple is we would crack the mic with our Y, and they would we would pitch, so to speak, off the nickel with a bubble. Okay, so that's how we would get to triple off of that, right? Coach, if we what, wanted what you... to run it to the weak side, okay, it wasn't really um, – what here, okay? It wasn't triple, right? But we would pitch it to the, to the third receiver, right? So we would crack with the X. Most dangerous guy could be the weak safety or the wheel bumping out of the box. We would arc the tee on the corner, and then it's just double option. Same read on the end. Up the field, I pitch on my left hand, squeeze, turns on the quarterback sweep. Matt, you had a question? Yep. Yeah, Coach, can you go back to the previous slide? Yep. What are you teaching the tailback there for his path slash tempo? Absolutely. He's going to get vertical first and be slow, right? It is a tempo play. He does not want to be too quick. Okay. 
vertical 45 degree step, slower tempo. And then he's going to turn his shoulders, right? Basically parallel to the line of scrimmage. I don't know if you guys can see me right now because I'm looking at my screen. But if I'm the running back and I get vertical, then I'm going to turn back and be very flat. And then as soon as I catch the ball, I need to get vertical right now. It is not intended for you to catch the ball and then get wide. Because again, if you're getting the ball at all, that means the defensive end is up the field. And there's going to be a very small path you need to follow to get vertical right there. Yeah. Yep. Good. Yeah, I love yes, this sir. weak side version, man. It looks awesome. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna look at it right here. The first time we're looking at the weak side version, it was actually just to the running back. It wasn't to the uh, third receiver. But um, but I've got a version of that as well. So, again, we're blocking power, right? We're going to double the three, okay, to the mic. We're back on the three here. We're going to insert, right? Here's the read key, and here's the crack. So we're just going to leave the corner on an island here. We get a really crappy crack block right here, but the end goes up the field, and we get a pitch to the tailback. Oh. Hmm. open grass <laughs> open grass right so again you know it's just power read for us but inverted right and it's the play we we fell in love with that we found different different ways to get to it right so you see i mean if we get a better crack block right here right and if the end had squeezed right let's say the end squeezed look at the grass for the quarterback right here yeah and we'll see that mm -hmm. later on okay all right, and here is your – I don't have an end zone copy of this one, unfortunately. This is AC Flora High School with the two QBs. We're going to get a crack on the wheel. We're going to arc on the corner, okay? And then here is your, your third receiver is going to be your shovel path, okay? And then we're going to read off the, uh, the weak side end. Okay, I believe we get a pitch right here, right? So quarterback is flat. Right, the end is kind of like crap. Why I'm not blocked? What do I do? Yeah. Right. Then he goes to tackle the QB, and we pitch. Okay, and you can see the numbers that we have now getting to the point of attack. Yeah, I don't like this play. Let's cut it out of the podcast. No one else sees it. <laughs> it was a great play, Coach. I, the yeah. creativity of being able to run the same thing different ways. I have. I mean, I know it's out there, and I'm sure people run it. So if you're listening, you're like, oh, I run that. Right. I haven't really seen this when I coached, you know, so seeing something right. like that would have just been a thing on Sunday where I'm like, oh, shit, like, right. we got to deal with this with. this week, man. Right. This is probably my favorite one, though, because you're going to get a quarterback keep here. Here's the triple option now. OK, so here's the end that we're reading. Right. We're going to crack the mic in case the quarterback does keep it. We're going to block the corner and we're going to kind of tempo back out bubble and pitch off the nickel. Right. So you're going to see here, quarterback goes flat in squeezes, right? He's taught well. I'm going to squeeze the down block and blow up the puller. So it's a quarterback keep now because they've lost leverage, right? So here comes the kid on the keep, all right? We get the crack on the mic, right? And now it turns into perimeter drill on the run with the nickel on an island right here. Yeah, this is right to the trips, man. And it's, you know, yeah. number two's got the bubble, one's blocking the corner, and three's cracking on the mic. I mean, that's... That's that's tough, Coach. It's tough to defend. There's a lot of space out there to play with. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of space, right? That's fair. Good. All right. Um, how are we looking on time, guys? Good right now? Oh, yeah. We're, we're good, Coach. <laughs> okay. Uh, GT triple, right? Again, we're still in the category of the first level, you know, read for us, right? So GT triple. Um, still, again, thought process for the quarterback. Since my read side is over here, right, this would be my butt side, right? So it, it's kind of quadruple option, right? Because I could throw it here, I could keep it, I could give it to the tailback, or I could throw it here, right? But the thought process for the quarterback is this just has to be a yes, no, right? Do I like the numbers or the leverage? If I like it, I catch the snap and I throw it right now. Yeah. Okay. If I don't like it, that's dead. I'm not even worried about that. Okay. Read key number one. If he's up the field, I give it. If he squeezes, I keep it. Okay. Read key number two. If he attacks me, I throw the bubble of the smoke. If he attacks here, I keep the football. Okay. All right. This was uh, 2021 versus St. Aug. They're in a stack, like a almost a you know three safety look right here. Um, yep. And we get. Um, 
We've got GT counter called this way, right? Here's your polars, okay? So read key one, read key two, right? So that four, that four I follows the polar. So it's an obvious keep for the quarterback. Yep. Okay. And then we're running a smoke screen out here, right? So we're going to, he's going to keep it and attack the nickel now. Nickel comes up, we throw it, we get just enough of the corner, bam, right there. We bobble it, right? And then we've got Dom Henry, who runs a 4-4 and is great in open space, right? And they have to try to tackle him. Coach, is that the hurdle kid? No, no. Oh, okay. God, he no. was fast. Yeah, that kid didn't play football. Oh, he didn't? Uh, <laughs> I know who you're talking about. That no. kid was incredible when I was coaching yeah, track. Was. Sorry. I trust Side me, I note wanna... for anyone listening, they had this extremely good hurdler who won every meet. He yeah, insane. he was a dude. He was a dude. Okay. One coaching point that I'll point out, th this slot receiver does a very poor job. He goes vertical first, then to kick this guy out. If we were running a tunnel screen, that's what he what he should do. If we're running a smoke screen, right, he needs to get out here right now. OK, and declare yep. that I'm going to block you and I'm going to make this kid pick because he almost screws it up. Right. If you look at it, right, if you look, we get the we get the the throw read right here. That corner's shooting it. You know, he's almost picking that ball off or blowing that kid up. We get just enough. If you look at it from the end zone copy here. Right. You know, even with that being a four eye, like I know a lot of people on GT counter. Right. If you've got if it's a backside four eye, you're just gonna bring the center back to block them, and that kind of ends up being an automatic give, right? Unless you have an extra guy off the edge. But we just said, hey, we're still gonna read this kid. We're gonna read him, right? And we're just gonna get a kill call on this nose right here, double the nose. Because you still have down for the mic, you still have a guard to kick, and you still have a wrapper for yeah. anybody else coming. <clears throat> so it ended up being a really know. easy, really easy read for the quarterback. I, I don't that. know how you feel about the the GT triple. I'll tell you this: my experience with it. Once I started running it, right. I said, "Why? Why did I ever run zone?" Right. I, it, it was it, it was such a fantastic change up from running just true zone read. Right. Um. That I, I was shocked I never ran it before. Well, because you know if you're getting if you're running true zone read. You know, inevitably you're going to get a squeeze scrape, and somebody's going to be sitting in your quarterback's lap. Yep. But if you're running GT and that backside linebacker is reading the guard pull, and then your quarterback keeps it, it can be it can be very difficult. Um, this was a kind of the same look here. I think that guy might even be in a three, but we're getting we're getting pressure right here off the edge. So again, tie it back into giving your quarterback answers. Marcus was smart enough to realize that this very quickly turned into kind of a pull pitch type of situation, right? He's flipping that ball out there very quickly. I'm going to go to the tall copy here. We've got a couple, couple different copies. Um, <clears throat> right, we're getting that that backer blitz off the edge here. Okay, so why not just yank it out and flip it out there? Okay, now I this is actually played very well by this defense. Okay, yeah. they force the pitch. The safety comes down. You know, I would have liked to have seen this kid block most dangerous man and leave the corner on an island, but he didn't do it. So right here, right, okay, right, that's a good picture for the defense. I get it. But with knowing who this kid is for us, we kind of like that picture too a little bit, right? It, it's perimeter drill. Sometimes you're going to win those battles. Sometimes you're not, okay? And he makes one kid miss, right? All right, he's got speed, and we turn this into, you know, a 24-yard 20, gain, I think. But definitely not, you know, it was well played by the defense, but you still got to tackle guys in open space. Yep. Okay. Get to a uh, a give read here. Okay, we're doing it out of trips. So we when we ran triple option, we wanted to get the triple option out of our GT, you know, trips, we would do the same thing. We we're going to crack the mic, right, and bubble and pitch off the nickel. This ends up being a give, though. Uh, that nine technique to the field goes straight up the field. So we give it, right? We get a good kick, a good wrap on the wheel, and we split it right up the hash. Stuff of dreams, yep. right, Matt? 
It, I just it, love it, how the running back kept it so tight. Absolutely. Perfect job. It, it's worth pointing out, too, though, you know, why why I like the triple off of GT so much, especially in the trips right here. If this would have been a QB keep, let's say we get a squeeze right here and the quarterback keeps it, okay, we're going to crack that mic right there. That kid's definitely going to get that seal, and then you're going to have that nickel, right, in, in no man's land right here. Is he going to take the QB? We're going to flip that bubble out there with nobody out there. Yeah. If you the bubble, right, and then we're going. Okay, we're uh, running it to the shade right here. You're in an over front. <clears throat> Kick, rat, Gosh. right up the hash. Wonderful. Yep. Take out the ref on the way. Beautiful. <laughs> if you uh -huh. knew, oh, if you knew that ref, you'd be glad. <laughs> I'll say it on the show. I'm good with it. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna skip the. Uh, we're, I'm gonna get into talking about the second and the third level reason. I'm gonna skip the traditional RPO. Right, we're here to talk about quarterback run and the and the PRO stuff. Uh, but I do want to get into uh, what I was talking about with package plays, right? Yeah. And so, again, called QB run in the box, right? Now, when we had – when I had Woody Barrett, and, again, I go back to talking about we just wanted to run him. Like, I mean, I, he was close to 2,000 rushing yards. We would have a personnel grouping where the running back would just come off the field, right? So we would leave the sniffer in the game, right, still be in four wide, but then – be able to run power and counter and not have to worry about our, our running back having to do that. This was our, our F or our sniffer, right? So any run in the box you want, power, counter, you know, zone, uh, slice, whatever you want to do here with some type of key screens, right? So, again, we would make the decision for them. We would call the play. Quarterback would then look to the sideline. We would signal which one we want you to do, throw the X, throw the bubble, or you run the football. Okay, you can absolutely have this type of play call and have your quarterback make that make that call. If yeah. he's the type of kid that can look at the structure of the defense and determine where the football should go. Okay, the first clip is Woody Barrett. I had to show one of Woody Barrett. Okay, <laughs> so we're in our the same set. We're just going bubble to the trip side, and to be honest with you, we we easily could have thrown that. Okay, we've got a hitch here that really should convert to a fade. And then we're actually going power into the weak side, okay? Um, they really should have had us here, right? But it goes back to, you know, what I talked about, who this kid was, and we wanted him running the football, and this is just a really fun play to watch. So we get Q power, right? He's right up the hash. Takes one guy, miss. No, thank stiff, you. Stiff arms another guy, right? and then you're good to go, okay? Yeah, like I said, can't really take credit for that. We're basically running oh, power into a, a seven-man box, but, hey, we felt – know your personnel, right? We felt good about it, uh, and he, he made us – Coach, and they have a free hitter. I mean, the kid I doesn't get blocked. No, no, the I overhang know. into the boundary, no one touches him. 28 yeah. right here should make the play. Absolutely. I know but I can – 28 it. doesn't look like he wants that smoke. No. <laughs> He shuffles okay. around. Yep. Yeah. This was um, 2019, my first year, right? So same type of look. We're actually going outside zone to the field with a sniffer, okay? And then we're going basically bubble or smoke to number two right here, okay? So, again, package play. I The quarterback, if I back – I don't know if I can see it or not. No, probably not. So he looked to me. I gave the signal, hey, I want you to throw the smoke to number two. So that's how we got to this, okay? All right, so we throw it, and if I paused it right here, okay, we've got a pretty good look, right? The corner, the corner plays this really well. We should have a good look, right? We should have that corner blocked, right? We should have uh, the linebacker blocked, and then we're playing perimeter drill on the safety. Okay. Yep. The, the corner, but we like it. If we do our job, we like it. Okay. The corner does a really good job. Okay. He knifes in there. He blows the whole play up. Okay. This is Joe Bradshaw. We'll talk about him in a second. He should just be getting vertical, putting his head down, 
hey, just give me two or three yards at this point because we're probably not going to get anything. Okay, but I'll let it play, and you'll see you'll see what happens here. <laughs> right, that's good coaching, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. No, I, I had to show that play because Joe Joe Bradshaw, rest in peace. Uh, he played right. for me my first year. Went to Charleston Southern, um, and uh, he, he passed away uh, three years ago, I believe, or two two years ago. But um, but here's why I wanted to show this play though. Again, because you're talking about patch, packaging things together and getting your hands in the in in you know in your best playmaker's hands. We throw this ball. Again, in theory, right, this should be a good play for us. This is Joe Bradshaw. He runs a 4-4. I've got this guy blocked. I've got this guy blocked. Hey, just get vertical. You make one guy miss here, he might score there, right? It didn't work out that way, but the ball found its way to a kid that can make you look good because that's yeah. all he's doing. That's He's just making us look good right here. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, it was the – iconic memorable play for him this was the second game of of my career at nice the second game of 2019 he had seven catches for 260 yards and four touchdowns um and he w it was basically all plays like that okay um package play here ac flora high school where trips into the boundary okay we got some type of key screen here with either a hitch or a uh fade up top uh, again, we make the call here for the kid. We told him, hey, we're gonna, we want you to run Q counter left. So he just makes a little flash fake right there. He's not reading anything at this point. Okay. Um, we're running into a six man box and we're blocking six. Okay. We get clean. He's shifty. We make one guy miss. Okay. And he is uh, in for six right there. Okay. Check my battery power here. Good to go. We're going until Coach Draft's battery dies. All right. <laughs> I've got some type of beeping going on right now. I don't know. I think it might be my walkie talkie on the table. But I, w I wanted to add this one in here because it's, it's really the same play, right? We're going Q counter to the left. Okay. We've got a stack uh, bubble here to the trip. So he's blocking. He's staying. He's blocking. But we get, we get the look right here to throw the, the smoke into the boundary. The corner's off, right? It's third and five. And we've got options. Catch it, flip it out there, right? Watch the watch the throw motion of the quarterback right here. Okay. Again, we talked about this year. We had two kids that played quarterback that neither of them were quarterbacks. Um, not the most fluid motion you've ever seen, but <laughs> he could do that, right? Yeah. And so I felt like we did a really good job of just giving him easy throws when it was time to throw it. He could do that, and he could make you pay. Again, so it's just. Q counter in the box, bubble to the trips, and, and smoke into the boundary right there. Okay. The very next play, uh, very next play, we did the same thing. Okay. This might have been the second one. Yeah, the first one we did. So we, we ran it back to back. These were in sequence. Take it, throw it. Give me five. Give me five. Okay. Good. All right, now I definitely want to get to the the real pass run option right here before my laptop dies on me. I could always plug it in, and uh, we can go as long as you guys want to. I got about twenty minutes right here. I'm actually gonna. Can you guys see me right now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I get. I'm gonna show the crowd the office right here because I'm gonna get my laptop plugged in. The struggles, if you're listening. <laughs> Got, I don't even know what I've got drawn on the board. <laughs> well, Matt, what do you think about it so far with some of the uh, Q run and PROs? So I love it that he how c simple he's keeping it for his quarterbacks, uh, yeah. his decision makers. Um, you know, a lot of times, as he said, a lot of coaches they want to throw in all the RPOs right now and let the quarterbacks make the decision. I was guilty of that as well. You know, because you're trying to leave those decisions on the table, but. Uh, I love how he's simple. He's starting out the quarterbacks and and making sure that he's putting them in the right spot from the sideline. Yeah, and you know, I, obviously, opposite perspective defensively, <clears throat> RPOs off gap schemes are way more of a pain in the butt than off zone. They just are. 
Like right. Coach said, zone, we teach that day one. We're going to gap exchange. The safety is going to fill the glance window. We're good. Once you start throwing counter and these other things in, some guys, more guys have to commit to the football. So that de- definitely becomes a little tighter. Yep. Um, so, again, get into pure what we call pass run options. This was definitely number one for us. And, again, the, the I guess the, the creation of it was, okay, one, how can we run counter in 10 personnel well let's just have you know we didn't invent that obviously right tailbacks leading on the on the uh on the on the wheel backer okay um but then hey let's let's attach not a screen to it not a bubble right but we're going to run down the field even if it's just hitches right that that still yeah. looks like four verticals to the defense in the first five yards so pass run option the thought process for the quarterback here again i'm going to check right the single side right and usually, like everybody else, we're going to eventually put our best player right here, okay? So the key read really becomes the weak safety. Are you going to roll down and play sky and get underneath the hitch? Or are you going to roll the corner down and play cloud, right, and take the hitch away? Are you going to plug the weak safety and man the sky up, right? But it, it does need to be a pre-snap yes or no for the quarterback if I'm going to throw that, okay? If it's a yes, throw it. If it's a not, if it's a no, get off of it, right? And then my post snap is going to be basically, we'll go inside out on this. And it, it normally ends up being the number three receiver catching the ball. Sometimes it can be two. Not sure in this concept we've ever thrown the number one. Okay. So the coaching point for the quarterback is he's going to catch the snap and pop his feet, right? And not get any depth. Okay, and I'm going to show you when we first started running it, Marcus was getting depth, and it gave us a lot of problems because, remember, this defensive end is up the field yeah. on a pass play until the guard can kick that out, and it gave us some problems. So we had to tell our quarterbacks, you cannot get any depth on this pass run option. You have to stay heels at four and a half to five, catch the snap, pop your feet, and I'm looking one to two right here very quickly. If he's open, I throw the ball. As simple as that. If he's not open, right, I'm going to follow my guard and my running back to run Q counter back to the weak side. Good to go there? Yes, sir. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's, the first version of it was, you know, we're in 11 personnel. Um, we started, a, you know, in a, in a sniffer set. This is Grant Stevens plays tight end at, at UCF now. And we would just bump him to get to a trips, okay? And then exactly how we had it drawn up, we're going Q counter to the weak side, okay? We got choice backside, so hitch or fade, and then all hitches um, to the field side. So, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to, to, to look at this picture and realize that pressure is probably coming. You're getting solo coverage on the X receiver, <laughs> and he's off. Right. Yeah. So you're going to see the quarterback take the snap and throw the hitch. Okay. Coach, for these, are there any, is there any sideline influence or you're letting him play on the fly? No, this is, no, we are playing on the fly. This is it. We're, we're getting into our true pass run option, not a package play. Quarterback, you got to figure this one out, man. Let's, let's play fast and play. <laughs> play football okay now watch y'all see the quarterback getting all that depth right there right again this was when we were first started running that he can't do that because it you know if he got all that depth right there and then decided that he wanted that that was a no or a no here and he wanted to run it there's no way that guard's going to get that kick block right Mm -hmm. and that defensive end is going to blow that up right there okay you can look at it from the end zone copy here okay all right Either any way you slice it up, right? Even if we didn't throw the ball right here, we're still getting a six man box, right? Sorry, guys. We're still getting a six man box, right? With Q run, if he had decided to run the football. Okay. Now, the running back does a terrible job right here, right? <laughs> we, you'll see this is, this is week two of the first year that we were running this scheme. So, no bueno here. He needs to operate with tempo, almost like that shovel play we talked about. He's got to let that mm-hmm. guard kick happen, 
right? And he's got to find the hole like he's the ball carrier. So bad yeah. job by the running back right here. But it didn't matter anyway. Okay. All right, so next step here, okay, three bot, same play. It's all the same play right here, okay? We're getting a trips look. Uh, we're in a trips look, two high safety structure, okay? Basically a five-man box right here. This was the last game of Marcus's senior year. He had run this play a thousand times. So when you see how quickly he makes the decision to just run the ball himself, he had gotten to the point, right, where he basically knew, you know, knew what he was going to do before we, we hit the go button. Okay. Ends up getting getting 28 on that one. And, you know, one reason I like the, the combining, you know, the, the pass run option stuff, you've got these guys going down the field. Yeah. Okay. Down mm -hmm. the field. Again, defense never knows what route we're running. Okay. And we're going QB counter. Okay. And you've got one, two, three, four, five, six guys playing pass right here. It's just coach. I mean, leave the freeze frame that you had right there when you were counting. I don't even yep. know if you can go back to it. Yep. On the bottom of the screen here where you're running counter to, I mean, look, I see the back of every white jersey on the O line. That's usually right. not a good deal for the defense there. <laughs> right. I mean, right That's there. It's, wall. I see yeah. it 60, 61, 60. It's great if I'm doing film and I'm writing down numbers. I mean, good Lord. Right. Get a good kick. Now, same running back, right? All right. This is year two, right? That running back's been running this scheme. He obviously does a lot better job of the insertion right there. All right. He's got the will. Boom. We got to play. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, and then Marcus was just, I mean, he was really good in the open field. Okay, really good in the open field. All right, this was from this past year, actually. And uh, one of my favorite favorite ones in the set right here. Um, you know, you're getting stubby coverage to, coverage to the trips. Okay, you've got your mic hipped out on three. You've got your will in the box. You've kind of got, you got five. You got five and a half here as a conflict defender. And then what are they going to do on the backside, right? Are they going to, you know, are they bringing a cat blitz? Okay, are they playing cloud? What are they doing? Well, you know, this was game, whatever it was late in the year. Maddox Spencer had already established himself um, as, a, as, a, as a very good player, right? So this route is going to convert. I would have liked to see him go outside, but either way, he's going to convert right there that hitch route to a fade. So this is automatically a no for the quarterback. Like, he is not even going to mess with that, okay? His key read then becomes really this mic, okay, or maybe this open space to two if he felt like he wanted to throw that hitch, okay? So quarterback here, this was our, our backup quarterback at the time. Uh, the starting quarterback, I think he got his helmet knocked off. So this kid comes in. We call our core a pass run option, okay? You'll see him pop his feet, right? He gets no depth, okay? His eyes are reading pass right here, right? The mic, right, turned is out. already yep. turned to cover the hitch of the stick route, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, okay? So very quickly, he makes that decision. I'm going to run the football. So, I mean, I could freeze frame that in, in the, the thought process of the quarterback. He's thinking, here, I've made the decision. I'm running, okay? And then we're, we have six blockers into a five-man box. Yep. Wow. Great patience by the tailback and the quarterback. No, I, I was going to, you know, make note of that too. You're exactly right. You'll see it on the, um, you'll see how we get to, you know, they've got, they committed two to, to one guy right there. Yeah. They're, they're playing Ooh. cone right there. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it, you know, look, man, th this kid is a, is a phenomenal player. Yeah. Like, I mean, you, he had two years in a row, he's had, you know, over 150 yards, um, on these guys. So I, I get it. Right. And so that's why having answers. Um, yeah. Look, if we just would have called QB counter with no options and, and he blocks this kid, you know, and, and triggers the safety or the corner to attack, we're not going to get the, this box that we want. 
Yeah, and I think that's the point of putting your dude into the boundary here, right? As you absolutely right, yeah. do you have to commit two to that guy? If you do, right. then you're not going to have enough for key runs. So it's like you said, right. it's a numbers game, coach. Right. We get a good double team right there. Oh, I wouldn't call it a good. It's an okay double team <laughs> right here on the three. Okay, but just enough, right? We get a good kick right there. Bam, right? And it's great patience by. You said it best, the running back and the ball carrier, because it almost looks like he wants to bounce it, and he remembers like, nope, we should probably run the ball there. Yep. Well, I think to the back it looks, I mean, because the, the three-tech almost splits the double team a little bit, and the back says, nope, never mind, not my guy, and then keeps going. So he does, because yeah, you can see the back right. sees that flash of white, and he says, oh, I need to block that, because he right. splits it. He yeah. says, nope, not my job. So it's, it, you're right, it's great patience by both. Yep. Okay, I'm going to show you here. Okay, Coach, the other to... piece of that, sorry, before you get going, is the fact that no, you guys you have the confidence to call that with a backup quarterback. Yeah, I mean, that kid, we, it's, it's day one for us, right? So, yeah. um, you know, we, we do it a lot, right? And, again, it goes back to, you know, every play caller knows this and, and an offensive staff when you're building your, your set, whatever that looks like. Don't do too much, right? So, for us, this is a, a very – um uh, poor play right for yeah. the offensive line again they've been blocking counters since they're freshmen so they don't even know that we're throwing the ball all right and i don't want to tell you how many times we haven't been called for a legal man down the field <laughs> on this play because it's not even fair so they're just blocking counter the receivers are just running a hitch route right and all of the ownership is on the quarterback that that's the the key piece right being able to, to, to coach the kid to do it you can see stokes here again okay um right he got very quick with it bam he pops no depth the mic's flying out so he's committed he's committed he's committed right and now we've got six for six to the weak side sometimes we would it was a game plan thing sometimes we would take this option away and we would just block right so at least we knew we were going to get the corner or or the weak safety but we get a great log a great uh, insert on the running back right here, and we score. Okay, we just we line up in diamond right here and shift in the trips. Hmm. Log insert. Everybody's blocked. That's a great job on the log. It really is. Yeah. That kid is a is a was a phenomenal player. DeMarco Blackman was a three year starter. <laughs> this was his junior year. He shifted to center his senior year and uh, ran the show for us. And he's going to uh, Warner University. Um, here's a throw read right here. I, I've only you've only seen Q runs right now. Okay, so same play, right? Pop, throw. Okay, so again, right? We're we're blocking on the backside right here. Right, game plan. So now it's just simple, hey, is two or three open, three is open, throw it, All right? And it can get dicey, right? It can get, it can get dicey sometimes on that end, that will really both ends, right? But the quarterback is just have, has to realize he's got to get that ball off quick. Yeah. Right, because mm -hmm. you're either, you know, blocking down on the backside and leaving the, 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 this guy's unblocked until the guard kicks it. And here, right, he's got a hinge on that. Right, so you'll see it here how quickly quarterback has to uh pop his feet, make that quick decision and and throw the hitch to to two or three. Probably would have been a good play to the weak side too, right? <laughs> if he yeah. if he chose to keep it. Obviously. Yeah, when you got when you got no one for a blocker, it's always a good deal. Right. This was uh this past year, here's Bryce Frick. Ran this a little bit with him. Okay, pop feet, throw to three. Hmm. I mean, especially when you – I don't know what it is here. It looks like they're just kind of a quarters variation. But the people yeah. that are going to run stubby or many, I mean, that right. turns into a stick, right? And that's kind Absolutely. of a weakness. That's a weakness of that, you know, yeah. coverage. Okay. All right. You can do it with motion, too. Yeah, we'll, we'll dress it up at times. You know, sometimes we felt like we were going to get a lot of man right motion or no motion we would go hitch here right and then you could go slot fade i didn't mean to draw that line that deep slot fade right 
with the smoke out here. So now you're giving yourself kind of a man answer, right? Yeah. You can just throw that slot fade very quickly. Um, so just another variation we would get to. Here, we were still just getting the hitches. We just brought the motion around, right? They've got three over three to the trips. So the quarterback keeps it. We run the weak side off. Okay. Um, really, the last one is our QB outside zone stuff. We did this a lot with, uh, with Stokes in 22. And then this ended up being a really good play for, for our quarterbacks this past year. Um, line up in quads. Like, this is like as simple as we can make it, right? We're going to line up in quads. We're going to have everybody run a hitch. Since we're running perimeter run to the weak side, this guy was always blocking. Like, we didn't want to run a perimeter run play into a hitch route, right? So he's going to yeah. block the corner, crack the, the weak safety rolls down, or if he gets pressed, just run it off, okay? And it was really the same process for the or the thought process for the QB here is if one of the hitches is uncovered, we're going to pop and throw. If not, we're running quarterback sweep, okay? Um this was uh this is not fourth and seventeen, but it is fourth and five. Okay, it's fourth and five. I don't even know if we were going what? hitches right here. Matt, but... twenty bucks you tell me what the coverage is right here. <laughs> but here's five, uh, five over four. All right, here's the all thing all. I'll say about this. Okay. So first of all, we did this uh we had been running quads like kind of all night. And this is why quads is so difficult, right? They're obviously confused. Right. Yeah. Now Look, man, this is freaking St. Augustine, right? These guys know. Oh what yeah, they're we've doing. had Coach Braddock on. They are right. They are very they well coached on defense. Yeah, they're they're very well coached, right? They almost won a state championship this year, right? And it puts you in such a predicament um, if you can be at least a little bit multiple in quads because yeah. we had already hit a fade on a touchdown, right? Because they played solo coverage to the X. We had already hit like uncovered hitch to two or three. Right. And now on fourth and five, right, this was just straight up QB sweep left. I don't even think these guys were running the route. Yeah, and at that point you only had a five man box, so you're five for five. It's right. We I mean, if you look at it here, it really was a it almost was a uh four man box. Mm-hmm. Sorry, checked into that. You know, obviously, there's some confusion there. <laughs> I mean, that goes to show you, though, if you're a defensive coach listening, like, be ready for quads, be ready for empty, have those checks and everything, because it absolutely it can't absolutely. happen to me. One year we played we played Ridgeview, and they just came out and five wide the whole game, and we were, right. we're like, it's all right, we only have, we only have two things in the playbook for that. <laughs> all right, we can bring here's, six here's, or we can play um, coverage. <laughs> Yeah, it's a tough thing to defend. This was the actual pass run option where we've got all hitches up top, okay? Um, you know, with the outside zone stuff right here, like the quarterback kind of has to make more of a pre-snap decision here. He doesn't have a ton of time to be looking to see if this is open and then throwing it. It's like, hey, you know, somebody's uncovered uh, and I'm going to pop and throw or I'm just going to run quarterback sweep. Yeah. And this was Frick right here, right? So – not not the same type of athlete, but was very capable. And really what we should have done to make this play a little better is if we were going to combine the pass run option with the outside zone, we should have just locked the backside tackle, right? I mean, if anybody that even when you're running traditional running back RPO outside zone to the weak side, you normally need to lock that tackle, right? So you're not going to get mm -hmm. the five technique in the yeah. quarterback's lap. Coach, we... <laughs> Yeah. The first time we we ever ran this back when I was originally um, at Oviedo, we had a quarterback named Blake Bortles, <laughs> and we would yeah. run that quarterback stretch. Yeah, and we didn't just bubble the backside, and um, we run it into it too. And uh, yep. what a, it was a great concept for us. <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it's been really good for us the past couple of years. And again, I don't think you have to have a kid that's six two two thirty runs a four five, right? You just mm -hmm. have to have a kid who's capable mobile enough that can make defenses pay like Bryce is doing right here. Um, if they're not going to commit enough guys, to, this is versus Niceville in the playoffs right here. They're kind of scrambling around, bringing some pressure, very well blocked up front by our guys reaching that play side gap, right? We get, you know, we wash the nine out. 
Uh, we turn it up. Great block by the. You oh, got to have receivers that will block too, Ooh. right? I mean, that's that's Matt Spencer right there. Kind of a so. takedown, but if they don't call it, <laughs> that matter. And coach, on every clip you've shown, your blocking has been outstanding. I just yeah, they're getting downfield on that. It's it's uh, yeah, receivers. Definitely. O-line. Give credit right. to uh, those guys and our receivers coach from the past couple of years. Coach Coach Tayshawn Cruz has always preached that. And, you know, as much as we throw perimeter screens, none, none of those bubbles or smokes or whatever you want to call them, they're not going to work unless you have one or two guys, you know, yeah. one or two guys blocking. Um, so uh, the last set I had was more outside zone, right? But I talked about we're either going to get in the quads like I showed you or get into some type of an unbalanced whether that is an 11 personnel unbalanced or a 10 personnel unbalanced, like the one I'll show you here, right? So this was the first Ponte Vedro in fourth and three a couple years ago. You know, we're in quads, right? But we still have the running back in the backfield, right? So quads unbalanced, right? So if we wanted to go pass run option to the quad side, if we had any type of down the field route, which I'm not, I think these guys were just blocking on this play. These guys know, okay, if we've got hitches called, I've got a hitch, I've got a hitch, and then we'll teach the guy that's covered, right, the 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 receiver that's covered up, he has to bubble back, yeah, right? Because if he goes down the field and we throw it, obviously you're going to get a legal man down the field. So we can still get to what looks like quads, hitches, and then whatever run play we want in the box, okay? And then so here, you know, it, it's fourth and three. They're in a seven-man box, right? But with the running back back here, and we're running outside zone to the left, right, with the tailback leading, they've got seven, and we're blocking six, but we're running away from the seventh defender. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Too easy. Yeah, so just a good, you know, unbalanced, you know, quads, formations that – you know, maybe people aren't accustomed to seeing week in and week out. Uh, and we're just kind of running our, our core stuff like we've uh, like we've seen before. We ran this a ton on the goal line, right, out of 11 personnel. So we're going to get the sniffer, right? We're going to get the t- running back. A lot of times we would tag this with slants, right, to kind of have a man beater out here. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if we threw that one time, right, but it was there if we wanted it. It just turned into – it turned into quarterback sweep and, you know – it's as simple as that. You know, when you run your quarterback and, and you lead with your tailback and your sniffer, you're going to have an extra hat in the run game. Um, this is the quads look again, right? And then we are running slants here. So he would have slant. He would have slant. He's covered, right? Because he's he can't go down the field, so he'll bubble. And so if the quarterback wanted to and he liked maybe off coverage or outside leverage, he could pop and throw the slant. But we're getting four for four over here, right? Which should be, you know, which means we should be good in the box. Uh, this is the last one we'll show. This is uh, this was to win the game this past year versus, versus Ponte Vedra. Again, Bryce Frick, uh, two-yard line. This is just going to be a tough play to stop when you, you've got a tight end and a running back leading for your QB. Um, you know, you almost have to just go three for three right here and, and hope that the eight are going to figure out a way to, to work it out in the box. Yeah. This was with about a minute left down by down by six points right here. So we scored and then kicked the extra point and ended up winning the game. Let's slow them up. Oh, yeah. Great play call there. That is fantastic. I think. Stop the show. That's all I got, guys. <laughs> well, Coach, hey. we appreciate you coming on. That was fantastic. Matt, do you have any questions before we get to our last question? No, sir. I mean, I, I absolutely <laughs> love it. I did a lot of the tagged quarterback runs on power and counter. Always kept that in the repertoire. And it, it I'll tell you this, Coach. We got into a bind one year where not only was our starting quarterback out, but our backup quarterback, he had like a dentist appointment that week. So 
couldn't play him, we had to take our right. quarter, our running back, put him at quarterback, and we just right. ran our quarterback run base series Absolutely. out of it, and it was right. um, it made life so much smoother that week. Um, so it, it's great to have in your in your playbook just for that fact. Um, but some awesome stuff, and obviously you guys are coaching up those athletes to do it the right way. For sure, I I, I appreciate you guys having me on and. None of the stuff that um, that I've shown would be, you know, we wouldn't be able to do it unless we had a, a really good staff. I just, our, our guys, get our guys coached up and we keep it simple. And, uh, you know, we, we teach those guys exactly what they need to do. And again, if there's one, if there's one position in all that, that has to know more than anybody, you know, it is the quarterback. And that's what makes that, you know, a, the, you know, the most important position in football because he's he has to make a lot of post snap decisions in, in the way we do things but we've had some really good ones been lucky in that regard and, and uh a lot of fun a lot of fun being able to do that stuff too yeah no doubt Absolutely. well coach we always ask this question to every coach okay we ask them what is the most unique um or special thing that your program does that not a lot of other programs do the most unique special thing that our program does and not a lot of programs do. Doesn't have to be on the field, can be anything, can be off the field, can be whatever you want. Oh man, that's that's a really good question. Um I'm gonna go super generic here in the sense that I know a lot of people talk about relationships with their players, but it is a huge focus point for us and for me as a head coach to be able to hire guys on the staff um, that, that one, are going to be open-minded, and number two, uh, and I should have said number one, I actually connect with kids, right? <laughs> and what, I, what I meant by open-minded is kids are different nowadays, okay? Yes, they are. And, and we have to adapt as coaches in the way, even when I started coaching, my first year coaching was two thousand. high school was 2010, and it's, it's changed a lot in the past 14 years. But being able to bring guy, bring in guys on the staff that can connect with kids and put that priority first above any X's and O's, right? Above any scheme things that we talked about and being able to get our kids to buy in to what we're selling them, right? Whether it is the scheme, whether it is our culture. Um, and it is a, a bit different here at Nice. Nice um, is a, it's a special place to be. We have a unique type of kid. Right. We have kids that will do anything you, you ask of them or run through yeah. a brick wall. They're very smart. Um, but we have to be, you know, we have to be a little bit different. That actually is our, our mantra is be different. It's something we preach to our kids. And there's one thing that I like to say we hang our hat on um, is that relationship piece. And uh, it's not me. Uh, it's me going out and finding those guys and, and being able to have those coaches that will establish those connections and what we're able to do off the field with the team bonding and, and getting the community and the parents involved with that uh, is something that I'm really proud of. Um, and I, I, I think our players would echo our players and our staff would echo that same sentiment that this is a special place to be because of the people. Yeah, no doubt. And that's, you know, coach, it's not quite generic, you know, but the one thing we've noticed that we ask this question to every coach that comes on our podcast Yeah, and it's never an X's and O's thing. Ever, yeah, which no, goes definitely. to tell you the most important part of football. It's always right. about relationships or culture or some kind of special game they do or some kind of special retreat or something like that. So, right. I, you know, I think these are great answers. and I, I want other coaches to hear it. You know, don't be afraid to to be special in the culture department as opposed to <laughs> on the field as well. So, yeah, well, that's especially, perfect. especially in high school football, too. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean they're mean, kids, man. Absolutely. They're kids. They're, they're kids. <laughs> and there's no NIL yet, I guess. Okay. And uh, there's no transfer portal um and you, you got the kids you got for the most part and you as a as a as a high school football coach you have to you know recognize that and, and realize why we're in it and, and and build that you know bond with your players no doubt guy uh, if you're listening if you want to reach out uh to coach drafts he's on twitter at coach drafts um if you want to reach out to us we're at the board drill podcast at gmail.com or at board drill pod on twitter facebook instagram and tiktok Coach, thank you so much again for joining us tonight and talking about a little Q run and PRO. We appreciate having you on. Appreciate you guys having me.